We're live. Hi, Yay. everybody who's watching uh, in the present and the future. <laughs> Welcome to the Interstellar Book Club live stream where we talk about the book we read this month, which was Last Exit by Max Yay. Gladstone. Got to be cool because he's called Max, right? Right? <laughs> <laughs> Wait, can you hold up your cover one more time, Max? Because it looks different from Yeah, ours. it's a different cover than ours. Oh, that's, that's so different. we have. I had that one, yeah. My life, I got mine from the library, and it had to go back. So. <laughs> mine looks exactly like the cover of American Gods. It it's does. the same cover, yeah. <laughs> so Good you know who I am. <laughs> UK rarely has better book covers. Usually, it's America, so I'll take this one. <laughs> um, yep. Yeah, so you know who I am because you're here. Uh, but do you want to go in a circle and? And you know, so we are out of practice. Yeah. <laughs> and you say who everybody is, and we also have a special guest today. So we'll start with Steph. Yeah. Okay. Hi, everybody. My name is Steph from the channel Coffee Over Apples. I'm also a co-host here, and I read a lot of horror and sci-fi and vlogs and art stuff. And come and say hi. And this is Mel. Hi, I'm Melody from Strawberry Lemon Books. I read when I feel like it, but <laughs> yeah, a lot of fantasy, and for our special guest, Tina. Hi, <laughs> um, I'm Tina from Sound and Fury Book Reviews. I mainly read sci-fi, but a lot of fantasy as well, and sometimes I throw in other kind of random genres, and yeah, I, I read quite a bit. I post a lot of reviews, so <laughs> awesome. yeah, that's me. <laughs> Tina's reviews are really good, by the way. Mm -hmm. Everybody's oh, um, channels are linked down below in the description. So if you're not subbed to any of these lovely channels, go and sub. Uh, it's good for you. <laughs> so do we want to say straight off the bat how, like, general reactions? Uh, do we want to give star ratings or do, like, a non-spoiler bit? Who wants to say, like, vaguely what the book is about if this book is possible to give like a a brief summary for which would be really hard <laughs> who wants to take on that challenge <laughs> i could i could try it'll probably be terrible <laughs> give, it, give it a go, give yeah. it a go. it's okay. about a bunch of people in their early 30s who used to be friends in college who used to go on vacations to alternate dimensions but now that they're in their early 30s there's a terrible rot coming in from the alternate dimensions and they have to stop it and one of their friends is missing might be dead we don't know <laughs> that's the worst that's, explanation that's <laughs> Sounds terrible. Complicated book. <laughs> I was like, how do I make it very, 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 very uncomplicated? <laughs> yes. That was good non spoilers as well. Good job. <laughs> good job. <laughs> also, an evil cowboy. Yeah. There is an evil cowboy. <laughs> I was not expecting an evil cowboy. Yes. Either. Yes. And it has a subplot about gentrification. And, um, and post epic journey, I think is important, right? Like, there's a lot yeah. of nostalgia. Um, I don't know what to say. <laughs> to I feel like post epic journey is kind of like a sh sub genre in itself. Yeah, because there's a really specific feeling that kind of comes along with that mm -hmm. of like loss and days gone by and nostalgia and sad stuff. From beginning to end. Yeah. From beginning <laughs> regaining, to end. regaining your youth. Yeah. <laughs> Attempting yeah. to regain your youth and you yeah. know it's futile and you're like, oh, I'm going to try to be young. <laughs> yes. But I'm just so tired. <laughs> <laughs> I was tired. This book, I, I mean, I'm like, I'm going to go out and party. No, it's like midnight. Yeah. I'm like, I'm tired. I mean, I know in, in some fantasy there's been this, um, this kind of trend, which I kind of like, of like older main characters which is cool, but these aren't like they're not older; they're just out of college. <laughs> they're like, yeah, yeah, they're not that old. <laughs> not they're that not old. Like Fifty-five. <laughs> yeah, they're just like my back cracks when I wake up. Like that's like how old they are. <laughs> hey, Roro. Hey, Roro. Hey. How are you doing? Roro, did you read it? Or are you just here because you love us? <laughs> So if you do, we want to know what you think. So do we want to do uh, star ratings so we know the basis for all the arguments and the criticisms we're about to give? 
so this I like went into this and I think for the first 100 200 pages I really thought this was going to be a, a high four star maybe even a five star it started really strong I thought it really started strong um but I think at the end it's probably going to be like a three star for me and I feel like that's me being generous um, nice. yeah Anybody else? Anybody else emotionally hurt? Anybody <laughs> else feel betrayed? I think we're going to have a mixed bag. I also, I'm giving this a 3.5, um, but I still feel like that's a little high because as I read it in the first half of the month and as it's been sitting, it's also been kind of like the dust settling and I'm just like, maybe it's really a three. Uh, like, <laughs> I don't know. I was at a 3.5 until like the end and now I'm at a three, I feel uh, like. Yeah, I gave it a three as well because it's uh, okay. <laughs> cool. Yeah, same thing as Max. I found it really engaging the first like quarter and then after that I kind of got really bored. Yeah. <laughs> I, <don't know. laughs> I feel like it's a strong premise as well, which mm -hmm. is something else that's confusing about how it devolved so quickly into something that I was just tired of. Mm -hmm. I feel like if this yeah, was maybe <laughs> like 50 to 100 pages shorter, it would have been perfect. Well, not perfect, maybe. <laughs> more, more in the sense of like, I wouldn't have fallen asleep at the climax. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, it definitely could be chopped down. I yeah. think it's especially the fact that it kept doing flashbacks mm -hmm. and it's like we've had flashbacks we we're done with this we know what happened now yeah like you could give us this information in a different way and have the the characters in the present discussing it and relating it to things that are also happening in the present but it's like adventure it's getting to the adventure getting to the good bit oh we're going back to college mm -hmm. and it was like that every single time something mm -hmm. good was about to pick up mm -hmm. i um, usually really like a good flashback too so it can be good. It can be like, Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm. Yeah, like you did it the same way every single time. It's like something's gonna yeah. happen. Here's a flashback. Something's gonna happen. Here's a flashback. It's like you yeah. can just weave it in a bit differently every time. Yeah. You know? <laughs> <sighs> yeah. And I think with those flashbacks too, it's like it would switch genres really quickly. Like we'd be in the middle of like monsters and multiple universes and like understanding how it is the system functions and then maybe like the evil villain would come out of nowhere something horrific would happen oh yeah and this reminds me of that one thing that happened in college and then it would turn into a romance scene in the past and it's like we're we're in horror mode why do now we're in romance mode oh okay now we're in like family bonding time like it just the <laughs> genre kept switching and i was like <laughs> i was getting whiplash yeah <laughs> yeah the only scene that really worked for me was like the the hotel scene when they when the cowboy kind of first arrives and yes. they, it, that really worked because it stayed in that scene the whole time there wasn't mm -hmm. any kind of jumping around and i got to kind of get into the the, mm -hmm. the, the groove of the genre of the horror part of it so it's yeah. like i was like oh that that's good that scene was great <laughs> mm -hmm. that was one of my favorite yeah. parts of the whole book honestly yeah, me too. yeah. <laughs> i thought the are we doing spoilers then i feel like we can't really discuss <laughs> the book without giving away stuff yeah. there might be a, a few more small things we could talk about that are non-spoilery like um overall i think this would be interesting and what i, I can see why it may have won some awards because it says it won the hugo and Maggie. oh no the author i take back what i said hold on max gladstone has won Hugo and Nebula um, awards, but not for this book did they not oh, win it yeah. for the this is the how you lose the time war Probably for that, yes. Okay. I thought it was for this book. No, it says winning author. There. Mm. Okay, different. So, um, <laughs> <laughs> the cover tricked you guys. Yeah, the cover <laughs> tricked me. <laughs> it's a little trick that you're like, oh, they won something for something else. I don't have anything else to put on the cover. Let's put the old one. And they the old one. Yeah. <laughs> <Lord winning. laughs> totally what we fell for it. What a bunch of idiots. Yeah. It happens all the time, it's very <laughs> common. <laughs> Um, there is an interesting theme here. Oh, not everyone's like, right. It's true. True. Yeah. This is true. Um, it is sophic. 
So mm -hmm. that I think is important to know. Um, and I actually thought that those scenes, which we'll go into in the non-spoiler part, I really enjoyed those romance scenes. But I think what what I struggled with was like like you guys said, the whiplash of like, okay, it's a different mindset. We're in romance mode right now. And there was something really sweet about their relationship, which we can't we can't talk about that yet. That's spoilery. Not yet. <laughs> oh, this is hard. Okay. Can we talk about in maybe in a non-spoilery way that there's a lot of conversation here between the juxtaposition of math and something fantastical? Yeah, I think that's we can talk about that. I think that's that was something really cool about the book. Um, and it, it reminded me of I think it was that Carl Sagan. I think it was Carl Sagan when he he said that mathematics is the handwriting of God mm. and it's the the mm. basis of everything. Like mm -hmm. you boil everything down, there is maths at the core. Mm -hmm. it just takes that very literally. Yeah. They're but all really show. smart. Huh? They're all really smart. They are really clever. <laughs> they are, which... Oh, man, we can't get that into so spoilers. Which it, is kind of like the base for how things function here. Hmm. Um, I don't know what you really about, <laughs> about math and, f and fantasy kind of merging reminded me. I, I, just, I was just starting to watch The Foundation show on apple tv oh it's last so night. good and it was i was like oh my god only three episodes in and i actually haven't read the original <laughs> which is surprising because i read a lot of classic sci-fi but um how the one character because i can't remember his name was like visualizing math and using like there's it almost felt fantastical because it was so yeah. complex and you couldn't like show mm -hmm. her doing it because she was doing it all in her head and that kind of reminded me of this book because i was like oh it kind of felt mm -hmm. like that like it was too complicated to kind of explain and I didn't know how much that was a cop out in this book or how much it was just, you know, he obviously doesn't have the math to prove it because <laughs> mm -hmm. no one really has yeah. the math to access parallel universes. <laughs> mm -hmm. it, so. I felt like they were trying to go for the whole, if, if it's sufficiently complicated, then it looks like magic to somebody that doesn't understand it. Exactly. And there were other characters who were able to access different kinds of magic in the system who weren't mathematicians. Yeah. So it's like that could be the ultimate form of accessibility or portal into having more control in these other realms. Mm -hmm. But if you don't have that, that doesn't mean that you necessarily don't, that it just kind of correlates to experiences, which is where technology played a really interesting place in this too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And we'll talk about the cowboy. Mm -hmm. Later. <laughs> <laughs> okay so i think we can get into spoiler stuff um that was like a, a fairly good non-spoiler section we were <laughs> well behaved <laughs> so yeah what what made you angry <laughs> who wants to talk angry. about their feelings <laughs> I wasn't so much angry as disappointed, you know, and I've said that to my kids before. I'm not angry, I'm disappointed. I think everyone's got that from their parents. I was just kind of like, I'm not mad at this book. I'm just kind of like, you let me down a little bit, and yeah. that's too bad. <laughs> it was very character-driven, and I think with that being said, if you really like these characters or you see something in, the, in them that you can relate to... Um, whether like their choices in how they move throughout adulthood or their mm. relationships or how they avoided problems or whatever the case is. Like if you really like those characters, then I can see someone really loving this. But if you didn't love the characters, you're in it more for the plot. That's where kind of like the disappointment comes in for me. Yeah, I can, yeah. I can understand that. I agree. Definitely. Yeah. I feel like I didn't really oh. love... Oh, sorry. No, go ahead, go ahead. That was me. I feel like I didn't really love any of the characters. Like, if they die, like, I kind of like Ramon the most, I think. But mm -hmm. if any of them died, I'll be like, eh, okay. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Whatever. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I liked Ramon. He was cool. Yeah, I did too. I actually liked Sarah, but that's because I was, I just was like, I don't want her to die because she has kids. I feel bad for the kids. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sarah, I like that now that I have kids. I'm always like, oh, I feel bad for the, the kids of the parents if they die. So I'm always like, I hope the parent one lives. Yeah, Sarah Sarah threw me through a loop because that was one of the only reasons I didn't want her to die. But then also I didn't agree with a lot of the choices she was making. 
true. Yeah. True. Agreed. Yeah. I was just like, yeah. I don't want her to be <laughs> poor kids. Right. It, didn't she? Okay. So what got me in the beginning, and I think I said this in the discord was that Sarah is married and she's becoming a doctor and she's from a rich military family. She's kind of like set for life, mm-hmm. but she knows about these alternate worlds and all the, the rot and everything that's coming. And her husband believes her because she drew a map. <laughs> it would be very what hard like to that, be like, Steph? it'd be very difficult to not be like, okay, crazy wife. You know, yeah. like, maybe I'll, he was lying to her. <laughs> maybe he was just playing along. You know? I don't know. I'm, He's like, oh, she has this fun idea. <laughs> <laughs> And like I love how supportive so that happened and he's like super supportive of her going like okay honey you need to go away for two days go for it. like seemed like a really supportive husband and then she like goes on this quest where she doesn't really get a chance to explain to her family hey you're probably gonna like report me as a missing person by tomorrow yeah. but I'm just gonna go on a quest sorry fam and then for like months <laughs> I then, guarantee like, yeah. Guaranteed you five days after she left, he was under investigation. Right. Yeah. Hundred percent. Totally. And then, like, doesn't she end up kind of cheating on him on the on the? Yeah, trip? she fucks ish. Yeah, I oh was like, God. wait, I thought that was a flashback. No, no that it was in the, the in the oh. trip. In the and old. she was like, well, you know, we might oh. die. It's the end of days. And like, I've always had a crush on him since we used to be on our magnum opus quest. And it's like, well, honey, <laughs> what's happening? That was I thought a... that was the flashback. No, so that, that, was, that was for reals. That was that thing that you said you to know what? me. I think I thought that was a flashback too. Because I was right. like, what? I, I listened happened. to it twice because i had the audiobook so anytime i would get confused i would just push the back button and listen to it again and i was like oh this is happening now <laughs> like, huh. yeah. yeah oh i thought it was a flashback too <laughs> <laughs> so that makes me change my opinion of sarah <laughs> quite a bit right. i hate when people cheat i hate it so it's, yeah. it's like <laughs> so never mind she could have died <laughs> <laughs> uh eh. There was that thing that we were talking about um, I, when I mentioned it to you, Steph, before, and you said you felt like her deciding to go on the quest, Zelda deciding to suddenly go on the quest like that just because of June, mm-hmm. but for no reason, really. For no like reason. She's, she's had, like... <laughs> I don't know, you've had, like, you messed up really bad, but I mean, you've had 10 years to think about fixing it, and all of a sudden, this one girl shows up, and she's such a spunky little kid, and you're like super inspired, and you're like, now is the time. It's like you left it quite late. <laughs> it's the it's the coming back every ten every year and knocking on someone's door for 10 years until they let you in for me. It's like, I don't get it. <laughs> Yeah, How pathetic. I'm like, just move on. I'm sorry. Yeah, that's a <laughs> melodrama. For sure. Like, I'm thinking back, and like 10 years ago, I'm like, what was I doing? I don't know. I don't remember <laughs> anyone I hung out with back then. I mean, I have friends from back then, but like, I'm, I don't know. I couldn't tell you. <laughs> but then again, I didn't get like lose my partner in a crazy whatever actually happened. <laughs> Fell in a pit. I don't know. I can't describe it properly. <laughs> When we get to that part, I'm going to need you guys help to remember what exactly happened at the climax because yeah. I was like, is. Yeah. What was her name? Sal? Sal. Yeah. Is was Sal alive the whole time? Was she actually in essence the alt? Like what happened? I don't even yeah. The ending confused me. <laughs> so as far as I could tell from the ending, the rot was just the expanse of alts in which humans couldn't imagine themselves and their current secure lifestyle I guess I think that's how I took it at the end okay because like (laughs) did they go to a different dimension or like break out like was their world not real or something like that I think they learned how to because they were talking about how humans could only get to the horrible alts because yeah. humans are messed up and pessimistic and they see the world bad. Right. But then they, the rot was the thing that allowed them to see 
everything and not just the bad ones. So the rot I was think, good. I think in the in the very end, the rot was good. See, this hmm. is part of it that I think is what kept me going as an interesting point was that the the alts were as bad as they could imagine. So they had a lot more control than they thought they did the entire time. And that it couldn't, it could only become positive when they themselves stopped being nihilistic. Hmm. Um, hmm. So I, th- I did quite like that. Yeah. I thought that was very cool. Um, so there's some, there's something there about like all these characters trying to pretend that those things don't exist and to go about living a pseudo normal Consider, su- successful by American standards because of this whole book was very much a criticism of American society um, mm-hmm. and just ignore that those things are there, but it's always in the back of their mind. So like mm-hmm. manifestation of existential crises, is that really what this is? Maybe. That's Maybe fair. it's manifestation <laughs> of bad stuff through like guilt. Yeah. Hmm. Are we, do, are we going to the- talk no, go, go on, go on, go on. As I say, maybe it's also like their like society comes into it as well. Like their perception of what their society is like mm-hmm. is also making it seem like they don't think there's a better place. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Maybe because America seems to think that they're awesome sometimes, and maybe they're realizing they're not awesome, and that's kind of mm-hmm. throwing them out of a loop. Saying this as a Canadian. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not trying to insult anybody. I'm just that's saying that like, maybe that's kind of like yeah. realizing that. Society in general, Western society anyway, is like, you know, not as good as it, it could be because of things that we kind of ignore in society. Maybe that's also mm. it. Like they can't mm. see a positive because they're supposed to be living in this great time, but there's things that are really bad, mm-hmm. like mm-hmm. wealth equality, things like that. Yeah. Like constantly putting a band aid on things and saying we're fine, yeah. but never getting to the root of the issue. Yeah. And maybe that's why they can't see the positive until they realize that they have to address these things in order to move forward. I don't know. <laughs> I feel like that's a really big theme and yes. that there was a lot of potential here for this to be done very well. And I think in a way it was done well. I just would have liked it to be more concise. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, definitely. I think like mm-hmm. this, this, like you were saying, this could have been a good few hundred pages off and still been the same book. 21 hours of an audio <laughs> book is very Mel, long. Mel, that's 21 hours of your life you'll never get back. 21 hours. <laughs> I'm so surprised you finished it. Kudos to you. Yeah, right. <laughs> Trooper. Uh, wait, you started this yesterday and you did you sleep? Yeah. I I did it on like 2.5 times speed though. Oh, okay. Okay. So okay, okay. It like chopped it. But it's a very long audiobook. Yeah. Yeah. It was a lot. So are we I think gonna... the longest? Oh, sorry. Go ahead. I was going to say, are we going to talk about how this is a Dark Tower fanfic? Yes. 110%. <laughs> Tina's, Tina's words, not mine. But I fully and wholeheartedly I felt agree. so bad saying it, but I was it's like, true. no, it just feels it's like true. it. Very true. Very oh. true. Which I'm very curious to, like, to know what the difference is. Because I think, Mel, you haven't read Dark Tower, right? Mm-mm. So, like, not Can I explain... <laughs> That information. Go for it. Yeah, walk us, walk us through the parallels. Yes. My my ex, my idea behind it is the fact that the Dark Tower isn't that old, mm-hmm. so like for it to be a remake in a sense is too it's too soon to like yeah. make a modern version of it. In my opinion, even though there are things about the Dark Tower that are dated, so for me it feels like this is how I would write it today. But because we're not, it's not like we're rewriting. He was rewriting something from the fifties. Mm-hmm. It kind of feels like. You're just taking the idea and applying it in your own way. Mm-hmm. So, like, that kind of feels fan fiction to me. And nothing against fan fiction, but it's, like, it just felt too similar. Like, the cowboy felt too much like Randall Flagg to me. Like, the fact that the characters were all, like, very kind of... No one was very chipper. Very fit the dark power as well. Mm-hmm. <laughs> there wasn't an animal companion, so that was the only difference, in my opinion. And there wasn't a child, I guess, either, but... <laughs> I mean, we had Jude. I don't know. Jude was a teenager. Oh, you're like, right. Yeah. 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 Yeah, she's June, kind of Jake, she's two J's. Mm. Yeah, exactly. Oh, yeah, two J's. Yep. <laughs> it just felt like too bear. soon. <laughs> That's the only reason I said it, really. 
was there a bit about a bear that you said? Oh yes, there was um there was a scene. I'm trying to remember what it was, and it, I know that in the dark tower. So for some context, so that Mel can understand, and then anyone else who hasn't read the dark tower, right there, you have these main characters that are pulled in uh, by the main character. The main main character, Roland, is like a cowboy, right? And I'll show you pictures as we go. There you go. <laughs> and he pulls other characters from alternate Earths. Yes. <laughs> He pulls characters in from alternate Earths, um, from different timelines and uh, different social classes. <laughs> the worst photos to say that ever. It's so terrible. It's so terrible photo. That's horrible. Um, and they go on a quest to stop the universe multiverse from kind of like falling apart. And there's these things called the beams that all come together at a central point, similar to the wheel that the medicine wheel or whatever that wheel mm -hmm. was that was here. Yeah. And those beams has a guardian. And so in the uh, dark tower, one of them is a bear. I don't remember the bear's name. Um, Shadrach. Shadrach. Yeah. Shadrach? Something like that. It's and Shardick. It's right named after Shardick. a... Yes. Yes. It's named, it's named after a novel by the guy I think that wrote Watership Down. Yes. Um, oh, and yeah. the Shardick actually ends up kind of like becoming sick and infested with worms because the universe is falling apart. And the same thing happened here. Um, and there was all, there's also a organization, I guess is the best word of bad guys that are mutants um, that are working to make the universe fall apart. And they're kind of inserting robots mm -hmm. into places. So like yeah. one for one fanfic. When was the Dark Tower published? 1982. Mm -hmm. Okay, fairly recent. So fairly. But the last one came out in what 2005 2007. or something like that. Two, yeah, five. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. yeah, so it took him about thirty something years to finish it. I can yeah. see the parallels without reading it. <laughs> I, thought, I know there's I a picture the, of the bear. <laughs> the bear was horrible. There's a picture of it somewhere. I I thought Sorry, that the going. crossroads was definitely like the tower. Mm -hmm. Right, but then I think the medicine wheel that they went to seemed to me to be really, really similar to the standing stone circles that Roland used to speak to the speaking mm -hmm. demon and the elementals. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and it really sounded as well like when they're in the last bit of this book of Last Exit, and they're in Elsinore, and they're standing on the balcony, and there's a bit where he describes like the road suddenly becoming clear and everything funnels in that one direction. And is that mm -hmm. not the beam? Yes. 100% that's the 100%, beam. 100%, yeah. There yeah. was also in that same, I don't know if it was the same chapter. It might have been because I remember thinking that they were describing the beam and that there was like a field of flowers, but they didn't specifically say roses, which it's a field of roses that lead to the tower uh, in the dark tower. So it was, again, the same. Yeah. Can't Do you find think that it was intentional? It had to be. There was a point where I think Ramon was driving his Challenger through what sounded like the wastelands. Yeah. Yeah. I felt. I mean, the, also Sarah quotes talks about Stephen King a couple times and talks about. I don't think she necessarily says word for word the Dark Tower, but she says that she read a major Stephen King book. Yeah. Um, and that kind of like influenced her imagination, which in turn influences what we see them going through. Hmm. So like is the author it. saying that the parallels are because of the characters who read the book making the parallels happen? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Sorry. Maybe. <laughs> Come on. Maybe. Come on. Maybe. <laughs> Because technically so what's in their mind is somewhat influencing the worlds that they go to. So. Yeah. That's true. Yeah. And one of them, clearly there was somebody really cool in their group because they kept going to worlds that had dinosaurs in. Yes. Yes. So. I wanted to see a dinosaur. Yeah, <laughs> I was right? so upset. I'm like, so where are the dinosaurs? Uh... That was disappointing. I was upset right. that we didn't get to see part. any of the actual adventure bits. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know that. 
I found it. It was in this one. There's Ooh. a bear. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. And you look, he's got a robot hand. Yes. Yeah. Same. Oh, same they had to shoot, shoot the top right, to make him frenzy or whatever, and then he would stop. Right? I can't remember. In that picture, so. he's screaming out, look at my robot hand. <laughs> Yeah, Which he had like a little radar have... dish on his head yeah. and they had to ping it. That's exactly yeah. what I would scream if I had one. So, <laughs> so what was what did, was everybody's favorite bits? Because there must have been bits that we did like in this book. What were bits that people were like, yeah, that was actually really good? The hotel part. What well, we talked about that. The hotel part, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. That was really good. Uh, I really like the I kind of like the oh, Sorry. We no, you go ahead. I, really, I know, I'm sorry. You go. <laughs> I really like the beginning, like the build up of seeing their lives and then all of them coming together. And then, yeah, the robot. But it was cool to see what they went to, like in the past, like how different all of their lives are and how they moved on. Well, some of them moved on and stuff. I think there were <laughs> two. There were two bits for me that I was like, that was so cool. The first bit was when she went to the other alt through the subway mm -hmm. near the beginning. Mm -hmm. And she was in that other alt being chased by all the like cyber bugs that were trying to rip her apart. Mm -hmm. That really, I thought that was going to set the tone. Yeah. When I, I read that, I was like, if the book is like this, this is going to be so freaking cool. That reminded um, me of the mummy. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The scarabs, yeah. <laughs> Totally. Yeah. totally, you're right. Totally. Or if anyone ever played um, in the arcade Time Crisis, we have to shoot the bugs. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, that's awesome. So, yeah. I think the other bit I really liked was when she went in the medicine wheel, when Zelda went in the medicine wheel and saw Sal 10 years ago. Mm. And there was like the weird time slip. I thought that was pretty cool. Mm -hmm. but, but yeah. Also, um, the proposal scene got me. Yeah, that was cute. Aww, it was cute. Mm. So, like, I think when that happened, it kind of, it, I already knew that Zelda loved Sal and that 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 is a grief that she's been working through this entire time, but it just kept building up why that there is so much grief with that. Yeah. Um, and it made it make more sense. Um. I still doesn't justify, I think, taking 10 years to be like, listen, I need to talk to you. Can you open your door? Mm -hmm. but, <laughs> but I felt that. Yeah, I don't know. Um, I did like June as a character, though. I did, too. I thought there were several points, though, where she was quite unnecessarily confrontational mm -hmm. to people that were just trying to help her. Mm. Mm. So I was kind of like, <laughs> I, was, I like June, but there were several points where I was like, oh my god, June, just shut up. <laughs> could her be, that could her be, be her being 16. <laughs> Maybe. Yeah. Maybe. My, my brother is only eight, 18, and he does that just at random. Just tries to be a dick for no reason. And I'm like, I'm not impressed. <laughs> yeah. Pushing boundaries. Yeah. And then also, she doesn't have like, she doesn't have the experience that they do. So she's willing to take more risks, I think, because she's not fully aware of how dangerous the situation is. Yeah. Oh, which makes me think there was another scene which I thought was really cool and gruesome and also reminded me of things of like Dark Tower. Hmm. Um, there was a scene which they, I, in hindsight, I'm like, wait, that doesn't sound safe that they I think it was Sarah. It might have been June and it might have been ish, I think but they were kind of splitting up because they were looking for water. It was after everyone got split up when they all mm. got sent into the alts and they found a wagon area and a guy who was like tortured. Oh yeah. They decided yeah. to help was, like, him. Dig him the ground. You guys know better than this by now. Like why are you You've done this for how long you should know, you see the trap from a mile away. So I don't know that part. While I thought it was really cool. Um, I was also like, 
guys, for everyone having gone to Yale and having all these like engineering degrees, you guys are pretty dumb. Like, why are you doing Common sense, it's a though, classic sure. post-apocalyptic trap. Like every post-apocalyptic <laughs> movie has that trap in some form. <laughs> like on your on your first mission, you're like, man, I got to help this guy. But like ten years down the line, you see a guy like writhing in pain, wires in his skull. You're like, ah, it's too bad. That's too bad. Yeah. Just, yeah. just, just move on. The excuse yeah. was that Sarah was a doctor, though. But I was like, Ish, even knew better. Like, just walk away. Yeah. And you're un under no obligation to fulfill your Hippocratic Oath in alternate realities. <laughs> you can, like, just, just leave that. One thing I found interesting, I guess it would have been way too much to, to bring into that, but it was kind of interesting that their knacks worked in every dimension. Like I would have thought that, like why does the why does the physics yeah. and stuff work the same in every dimension? I would have thought that some things might have been different, but it didn't really. I guess we're very very close on the timelines. We're not like woo. Well, they <laughs> like said alternate though, timelines where people are like all horses or something like. <laughs> or it's my little pony. Amazing. Like they didn't go to any of those. Yeah. <laughs> There's no zany alternate dimensions in this one. <laughs> Is it so? They they did say though off the back of that they did say. Did they? That some of they said some of the tech they brought back didn't work because oh, the physics worked differently somewhere else. But saying that, if the physics was working differently, why were their knacks still working? Like you said. Well, yeah, that's what I was kind of like. Hmm. It could have also, I think, as a more simpler justification, just been that there's no cell service in the other dimension. So, like, what are you gonna do with it? And they don't have Verizon, I guess, over there. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they don't have any... Yeah, even if they did have, like, satellites and cell service, why would their phones from here have the same type of... Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, but, okay, so let's... T there's two things here that we can t spend some time talking about. So let's talk about the NACs. Mm -hmm. And then we can talk about how they thought technology was either a pro or a con when it came to jumping into universes. But, okay... Should we explain what the NACs are and how it functions? Please do, because I still don't understand it. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> I'm going to try. Someone help me out if I mess something up. But there was uh, conversations between the characters happening of you build up spin, which is essentially their like well or reservoir of magic or access to tap into the magic or whatever we want to call it. I don't know. Is magical even the right word for what this is? They picked up maths and put it in the maths hole to use later. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and then they the asked that well to be able to use their knack, which is something that they don't necessarily choose. It's kind of like their X-Men, but with like not that cool powers. It's like... <laughs> It's like, like lame X-Men. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, I don't like if your superpower was you always Ramon's superpower was essentially he would always know which way to go, right? <laughs> so, yeah. like, so like everyone had something like that. Hi. Hi. Thanks for joining. Hey. I'm sure we still have loads of angry things to say, so stick around. <laughs> <laughs> We're trying. Hey, to we're not angry. We're angry. I'm angry. We're just Mel. disappointed. <laughs> <laughs> oh, never mind. Max is angry. <laughs> He's like, my time cannot be given back. <laughs> my 21 hours. I did my reading. Three weeks of it. <laughs> <laughs> Michael, tell us if you finished it and if you did what you rated it, because we all kind of settled around three th three stars. So tells you what we're thinking okay so we were explaining that so nice. yeah so like so like baseline x-men um so like zelda can go into other worlds faster than everybody else and bring people with her right ramon always knew which way to go because he can always think about it and the w a way to get there would just kind of manifest itself um june's was that she really wanted to see her cousin <laughs> so, so, like no matter what she did she would get the tools or something would happen that would lead her to her cousin so I guess it's like the knack is always based around what it is you want the most is that right 
I guess. I think okay. so. Okay, that's the best I can do. <laughs> I think they were all in some way kind of revolved around manipulating probability. Mm-hmm. Mm. So they were talking about how um, Ramon's one, where he could see the exact places he needed to be. So it's like he could see the probability of what would happen in every single outcome of him moving through an area mm -hmm. or like um uh, i've forgotten all the names already uh that's how big an impact this book had on me <laughs> Sal, sarah ramon sarah. oh yeah yeah okay okay, okay. Ish, sarah um, what were ish and sarah's next what was sarah's, ish's sarah's was that um she could keep everybody safe she yeah. could like raise the probability of bad things not happening Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I like. So she's her. got lot. She's got good luck. Yeah, <laughs> yeah pretty she's much. Yeah. Good to give it a video game set. That. <laughs> that one's not bad. I'll take that one. <laughs> it's not. So I will say, going through the next right, that I feel like I have seen this before, hmm. and yeah. I feel like it's almost a word for word copy of the different powers in a Brian Lumley book called Necroscope. Oh, and I feel like, that. and I feel like in that book as well, he talks about using math to manipulate reality as well. So I feel like as I was reading, especially the Mac stuff, I was like, this is like way too similar to not for the author to at least not have read this. I'd be very surprised if they hadn't. Mm. Hmm. It's funny because that raises the question of how much, like, obviously, you know, people are just regurgitating or, or coming up with new versions of different things. But mm -hmm. it's funny, like, when do you hit the point where it feels like, as a reader, it feels like a copy of something else versus just like an adaptation or the author literally had no idea that this already existed? It's hard to tell sometimes. It's this really one, I don't think. This one feels more like I have read this and I'm including it in my book. Where yeah. other ones I read, I'm like, oh, they just had a similar idea. <laughs> yeah, sure. and I mean, as as like we go forward in time, that's going to get more common because there are more books coming out. So the the likelihood mm -hmm. is just going to keep going up and up and up. It's going to be yeah, harder. I try to, to give the benefit of the doubt that this person didn't do that, but with this book, I feel almost like he was trying to do a bunch of homages. So like yeah. maybe. It was a copy, co not a copy, but I guess it is kind of a copy. I don't know. It's, that's, that's a mean word in a sense. And I, don't, <laughs> I don't like being mean. With how heavy handed yeah. the the references to other things were, I'd be so surprised hmm. that wasn't the case yeah. here. Yeah. Also, looking at the comments now, Michael says, you should know by now I didn't read the damn book. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Thanks for the support, though. Well, we're, we're really glad that we here. give off good vibes and people just want to come <laughs> and hang. <laughs> I love that. What was the other thing you said to talk about? Um, technology. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think I would like to flesh this out with you guys because so um, a conflict in the book was that they didn't want to bring any technology. Zelda didn't want to bring any technology because um, having a server or having a database that constantly knows where you are changes your ability to jump into alts or i guess like lessens the probability or control that you have um mm -hmm. and ish specifically post epic journey built a uh company that specializes in surveillance um so i guess i'd like to work that through and see what you guys thought about that because i feel like it unless i fell asleep for this section i don't think that was ever fully flushed out event. if it's all about knowing where you are in a reality making it harder to like blip over to another reality would it also be made harder if you had a photograph of you somewhere or if you had a map like a physical paper map of another place would that be as like prohibitory in the same way like the one that sarah gave her husband <laughs> i don't know do you think he has it hung up somewhere, like in his office? He just looks at it. Probably. <laughs> He's like, oh, like, my crazy yeah. wife. I love her so. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder if that part of the story was supposed to be like a comment on like 
how you know google and amazon all of them are spying on us all the time and we just kind of accept it in society now do you think that that was almost just like kind of like a throwaway comment about that yeah i think it <laughs> yeah. could be especially with like issues company yeah. yeah that happened a lot though i think because it would be like we're in this epic journey something really fantastical is happening and by the way gentrification is bad and it's like these things were like it was like really interesting social commentary I just felt like the timing was off like okay we're battling an evil villain right now I know I know that like <laughs> the, the, the class it, like we have a class issue we have all these economic problems but like now's not the time to talk about it. I don't know it's like they're trying like they break into the um the bandit camp to steal the challenge and they're shaking off all the like bad guys in their tail. The remote just turns around. He's like, "So the housing crisis. I mean, it's pretty <laughs> bad, right?" <laughs> uh, oh my god! It I think like that was one of I like social commentary in books, especially. I feel like science fiction does that a lot, but yeah. this one just does it so much. Like it's just like in your face a little sometimes. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. yeah, it's I not really an allegory. It's more of just the here you go. It's like a billboard of here's the things I don't like in society. Yeah. In the middle of my story about alternate dimensions. <laughs> yeah, right. but like with that, you've got like in the middle of the book, it's like here's all the stuff I want to do a commentary on. But then at the end, you're like, so what was that story actually about? What was the message here? <laughs> there were so many messages. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I think, I think there were opportunities here for it to be done well, or if they had just, if the author had just chosen one to two and mm -hmm. really dug, de dug deep on yeah, those. Definitely. Like, I think the most applicable one here, in a sense, was there were points of conversation between, I think it might have been Zelda, Sarah, and June, June, where they were talking about their different um, perspectives and how that kind of changes the way that they experience the alts mm -hmm. or their knack because Sarah is from a predominantly wealthy white family and June is a black girl from New York and who's, you know, only gotten the bare minimum. So she's more willing to kind of take these risks and do these things where Sarah, the way that they were choosing how to go about this journey was very different and that was causing conflict. So like those conversations, they wow. made sense because they related to the journey, but other other th like other things was just like okay, all right, get to yeah. <laughs> get to the point. <sighs> Definitely not one I think I'm gonna reread at any I point. So either. No, I'm quite. I feel quite lucky that I didn't get the the version that you had because you had one with like super tiny really dense text. It's so, it's so tiny. tiny. Wait, how many pages is your book, Matt? Cuz ours one. is like almost 400. My book is 639 pages. Okay, that's what I thought. I was like this is not a 400 page book. It's like chunky. Yes. Our book is like 388, I believe. Yeah. yeah, I was like, oh, this is good. You know, this will be this will be a nice quick kind of read. And then yeah. I was like, oh, the writing is quite small. <laughs> yes. It's this is an art it's like yeah. so small too. <laughs> yeah, it's so tiny. And, okay, so also just to kind of show people, don't look too closely because we don't want to spoil anything. But I don't know if you can see that there is these like little markings here, these little symbols that would signify a time jump. Like a oh, like back to whatever the past, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. But it's like okay, so in just these two pages, we have three time, three timelines happening. So it's like mm -hmm. that's how quickly everything was shifting, and that, I think that kind of illustrates what the struggle was. At least they gave us that little tilde thing because <laughs> if they didn't have that, <laughs> it'd be so confusing. I, especially if in audiobook form, it just gives you like a slight pause. Mm -hmm. I feel like that would be confusing, especially yeah. like perspective shifts and stuff too. Oh, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. doggo. <laughs> um. So, where's doggo? Hi. Doggo. Oh my goodness, oh. he's so chunky. <laughs> <laughs> He doesn't like that I'm so in here cute. with the door closed because he Aww. likes to sit on his bed. And now he's whining and he wants to, like, me to come out. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so 
Uh, what can we talk about? What else can we talk about? Oh, Zelda confused me in the sense of they kept she kept sticking her hands into holes to grab <laughs> monsters <laughs> and then getting hurt and caught ca like causing all this in, in, issues to then proceed of like we need to save Zelda. But it's like, honey, you've been on the road for ten years doing this. Why do you, why aren't you why don't you just go to Home Depot and get a pair of gloves before you stick your hand in another hole? <laughs> why are you doing this? <laughs> <laughs> I feel like she she feels like she deserves the pain or something, maybe. Maybe. Yeah, I also didn't understand perfect. why they didn't bring anything armor wise or like yeah, Sarah weapons. was wearing a dress. Like why yeah. was she wearing a yeah. dress? Like wear like cargo pants, like you know, yeah, or weapons. Pocket. Yeah. Bring a knife, like bring something. Mm -hmm. <laughs> at least one of them brought a car. That's true. Oh, right? uh, yeah, at least. I'm surprised they survived two years doing this. <laughs> and Speaking they didn't car, though, die. Sorry. Yeah, you're right. Like the car though, like would it would components of it have even worked in the other dimensions given the technology didn't work? Because there's three the electronics in cars. I think the thing with that, the, how I took it anyway, was that Ramon was so obsessed with and dependent on the car and it was so like central to his reality that every time they switched or every time Ramon at least guided the switch he could only ever guide them into a reality that had his challenger in it mm -hmm. uh, oh yeah. that makes sense I, guess. Makes sense. I agree with that <laughs> yeah and I think Mel uh, has a point there too where I think it was very much because Zelda was driven by her guilt Hmm. that a lot of her choices were self-sabotaging. Yeah. Hmm. Still, gloves. Good idea. Still <laughs> gloves, yeah. <laughs> monster hunting one. Rule number one, monster hunting. <laughs> Wear gloves. Yeah. And good shoes. Don't wear a dress. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Pretty much. Yeah. Um, okay, can someone please explain to me if you can, because I read it twice and it still didn't stick in my brain. Was Sal alive or dead? I think she's alive. Because she didn't come back. Alive. But yeah. she didn't come back to New York City, did she? Um, mm, I think she kind of... <laughs> <laughs> So I, <laughs> I think so my my problem is with the like the the interpretation of what the rot was at the end of the book and it being the possibility of other worlds out there was there anything really stopping Sal coming back on her own why was she having trouble coming back at all why could she not just like step through into another world hmm. I think it, well, first of all, Michael's right. <laughs> the comment that just popped in. <laughs> um, hard to disagree, actually. <laughs> if I got the opportunity to go be a monster hunter, I'd probably take that. I would too. As long as I didn't have to go into any caves with spiders, then I'd be fine. Just wear gloves, <laughs> Tina. It'd be fine. <laughs> no, wear a full suit, and then I'd be okay to go into spider cave. <laughs> I'll find anything, but I'm not going anywhere near a spider. Throw, my like, my monster like, hunting <laughs> gear. Did you ever see that really funny picture of somebody wearing the full hazmat suit, and on the bum it just says "juicy"? <laughs> <laughs> that would be that would be my monster hunting gear. That's so great. Bedazzled on the ass. <laughs> Oh my God. <laughs> I love um, it. I was going to say, okay, so I think the reason for Sal not doing that is because it felt to me like we were, as we were building up through the flashbacks and learning about Sal's personality, that she was very much, I don't know if savior complex is the right word, but she was constantly trying to be there for other people and was the glue of the friendship. Yeah. Um, and just like very much wanted to give fully of themselves to the world, which is why they kind of led this ragtag band of Yale graduates to other dimensions. Um, <laughs> so I think by her staying there, she had some more control over it to like prevent it from spreading further. Maybe. Um, 
or I could totally just be projecting, but I like to, I think, I think that was the reason why. Hmm. Projecting what I wanted confusing. her to do, but I don't know. I feel like she definitely <laughs> had like some kind of God complex going on though. Yeah. Wasn't she the sun at one point? Her face was like in the sky. Her she was in the sky multiple times. She was God multiple times. But like <laughs> but I don't yet know if that if is because that's what she was doing in her ability to stay in control of everything or if that's because of Zelda and June's knack and related to them on this quest specifically for her. Maybe, or maybe that's just how they were perceiving what she was doing. Or maybe the god, it seemed like she had a god complex, but really it's because they all thought she was like a god. Mm. I don't know. Or maybe it's <laughs> really not that deep. Which... <laughs> <laughs> In that universe, she was just a cloud. <laughs> yeah. And we're, we're, maybe we're trying to, like, because we're trying to find good things to say about the book, we're trying to assign meaning to things that don't <laughs> To have random meaning. stuff. That's why right? I was saying maybe I'm projecting, like trying to insert a, a narrative here. I don't we're know. We're just trying oh, to I find what it voices is. in the stuff. It was a reference to Teletubbies, of course, with the sun <laughs> in the face and the... <laughs> You know it was what? just another that random would, reference. That would scare me more <laughs> than the, like, the dark cloud over the road with the lightning. If the like sun came up with the baby faces, I'd be yeah. like, oh my god. Uh, I mean, I, I was I remember watching one time with my brother like years ago, and it was like one of the episodes was like, and suddenly in Teletubby Land, a door appeared, a door just popped open, and I was like, what is this universe? <laughs> it felt like that sometimes. I can't wait for your, your deep dive video into deep Teletubby lore. Oh I would totally watch all of them just to do it. <laughs> They're wild. Oh, oh that's great. Oh. Like Max goes on his monster hunting crest in his juicy hazmat suit and Hell nothing yeah. scares him like the Teletubby son. Like that is death. <laughs> <laughs> Arch, That's arch the arch final medicine. boss. Yeah, <laughs> Horrifying. I'm going to have nightmares. <laughs> uh, well, if anyone who's watching this, which there might be because some people in our in our Discord definitely gave us higher ratings than us. If you're a cloud, what are the raindrops? Gross, Michael. Ugh. Depends on your mood. <laughs> Oh no! Oh, don't say that. <laughs> oh, that's so gross. <laughs> um, please Go let us know <laughs> what you got, what your interpretation of this was. If you, if we are totally wrong, or you saw something that we didn't see, and please tell us why. <laughs> We're probably totally wrong. <laughs> yeah, <Right>. probably. <laughs> Do we have anything else that we want to say about this? I think we've ripped enough holes in this book. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I will say, so I, this is one of those situations where sometimes your mind's out of the gutter. <laughs> I mean, you can't your your mind out of the <laughs> it's like, it's tears. It's just tears. I'm so, so sad. <laughs> Sad, I can't help you guys. Yeah, I'm just crying. <laughs> I can just watch while you guys struggle and get killed by the towel. We need the gunner to catch the bodily fluid that's falling from the sky. <laughs> Tears of joy. It's <laughs> My friends are back together. I can die happy. You're just crying. Oh, no. They go on this whole quest and that's all she wanted. <laughs> it was all useless. Tears of joy because she's so psyched to be a cloud, and that's really fun. Insert happy ending here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh my god. Um. So when there's a book like this, after I finish it, and I'm like, did I really get that? I try to go to YouTube and find other people's reviews to confirm whether I understood what I just read, mm -hmm. and I really couldn't find any in-depth reviews about this. So this, our video might be one of the first. This is going to oh, be the, no. place, this is the place to be. <laughs> oh, no. 
It's funny because I, I filmed my review that I was going to do post on Tuesday. And then I said, okay, I'm going to do my review now. And then I'm going to do a little review at the end saying if I changed my mind after talking to you guys. And I, okay. I haven't changed my mind. I'm just going to be like, nope. <laughs> my we're, we're so saying. happy we gave you the vindication that you needed. <laughs> and I was like, am I being really mean and saying these things? And I'm like, no, everyone agrees. Okay. Yeah. I'm excited to see it. I'm excited to see what you think. <laughs> Without all the like crude humor <laughs> in the background, <laughs> it's probably terrible. Uh, <laughs> that's great. Okay, so do we want to um, showcase what we're going to read next month? I think uh, you have a copy, Steph. Ta -da! Dun, 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 dun. At this bot, point, number two. Yeah. <laughs> At this point, should we? Maybe we should discuss doing a read along if we're going to go into book two. <laughs> <laughs> it's probably worth it and i think as well they're so small that you can knock out multiple per month yeah yeah um so we read book one in june so we're doing book two in august and i don't think there is a synopsis in here hmm. oh there is a really short one if you want me to read it um yeah, so it's following Murderbot. And it has a dark past, one in which a number of humans were killed, a past that caused it to christen itself Murderbot. But it is only vague memories of the massacre that spawned that title, and it wants to know more. Team up with a research transport vessel named Art. You don't want to know what the A stands for. Murderbot heads to the mining facility where it went rogue. What it discovers will forever change the way it thinks. Ooh, Does the A that stand sounds for more ass? intriguing. I hope <laughs> the A stands for us. <laughs> I read the first Murderbot when it first came out, and so I haven't read it anything since. So I'm very excited to jump into this because I will not remember anything about the first oh, one. I was like, when you read that, I was like, oh yeah, all that stuff happened. I should go back and read all of your guys' <laughs> comments about that. <laughs> yeah, I'll just go back and read the Wikipedia the synopsis. Yeah, yeah, yeah that works too. <laughs> And I think, is it who's hosting that one? Do we know whose channel that's going to be on yet? Maybe mine? Yeah. I think both next. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Cool. Nice. Woo, we'll we did it. So I think that's all we got to say about this one. Um, <laughs> but thanks for tuning in and watching this from the present or the future. Thanks, special guest Tina. Woo! For having your insightful <laughs> comments and don't fun. forget to hop over to Tina's channel um, when that review actually goes up because I'm sure it'll be very cool. Yeah. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see. <laughs> um, That's a lot of pressure. <laughs> but yeah, no pressure. It better be amazing. <laughs> and not let any of us down. I'll have to add more gifts to it now. You can't yeah. say more entertaining. Now. Incredible. <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, that's it. Uh, make sure you sub to all the channels as well. The links are in the description. Uh, uh, thanks for joining us and we'll see you soon next month for the next one Murderbot 2 and that'll be over on Mel's, Mel's channel <laughs> that way yep. bye guys bye wave 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 wave